you can see. Okay. Yeah, we can see. Okay. So, uh, uh, I'm Lucas. I'm, uh, uh, representing the Cyprus uh, Consortium here. <coughs> I would like to give you a short talk about uh, viticulture in Cyprus, what we do and what we're planning Sorry, to do. Uh, there is uh, one microphone that is uh, on. If you can uh, check and switch off the microphone. Perfect. Do you listen to me now? Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, a few words about the viticulture in Cyprus. Uh, Cyprus, you know, is a small uh, nation island. Uh, we ca uh, cultivate here around uh, 7.7 uh, hectares of indigenous and international cultivars. Uh, the terroir here is mainly mountainous uh, on the provinces of Limassol and uh, Paphos. Uh, exploiting mainly uh, poor, uh, barren uh, countryside uh, slopes. And, uh, oh, and uh, I want to mention here also that Cyprus terroir is um, the only European terroir that uh, is phylloxera free, and this is something inter interesting for the project, I, I guess. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, indigenous varieties that they are being lately exploited by the local uh, wineries. Just to mention that we have, uh, for the size of the country, a uh, big number of uh, wineries, around 70. So we have red and uh, white uh, grapevine, mainly wine cultivars, which are very interesting in terms of uh, uh, climate change situation since they are mostly uh, not watered, they are not irrigated, and they show some uh, mitigation against uh, stresses, mainly uh, abiotic stresses. And some of them were uh, planning to uh, characterize or incorporate into the Revine project for uh, the uh, different uh, tasks we are planning to go through over there. Uh, so, mainly, as I said, uh, since uh, the Cy Cyprus doesn't have a, a crossing or breeding program, most of the varieties along the years have been uh, selected to heat and drought stresses by uh, farmers over the years. Uh, but uh, it has been uh, anecdotal, let's say, because it's not uh, published uh, information that they require less water and fertilizers. And, Maybe they are uh, suitable for strategies for the strategies of Revine uh, project that we are planning to see uh, along the three year study. Uh, so, to introduce a little bit uh, uh, the Cyprus partners, here uh, where the Cyprus University of Technology you see we are uh, located in the coastal uh, city of uh, Limassol. Uh, we have an agricultural farm in the uh, about uh, 40 45 minutes from the campus and we have also two partners to uh established wineries of the in the country the Vlasides winery and the Kiperunda winery uh fortunately they are not uh, uh, here today with us just to introduce them even with a photo <coughs> here is uh, mr uh, minas mina he's a general manager technologist of the Kiperunda winery they they cultivate around 20 hectares uh, in the uh, slopes of uh, Omodos Mountain uh, at the altitudes of 12 and 1400 meters. They hold uh, uh, vineyards that are among the highest in, uh, in Europe and they uh, cultivate, cultivate almost, among others the, the local uh, the indigenous variety Xenisteri. Here is the other partner of the uh, the, uh, of the, uh, of, uh, the Cyprus Consortium regarding to uh, companies. This is a Vlasidis uh, winery, a very uh, renowned uh, and uh, pioneering uh, winery for the country. They cultivate around 21 hectares in uh, at the attitudes, attitudes of uh, 700 to 1100 meters. And uh, they, they cultivate uh, indigenous also as well as uh, international varieties. In these two vineyards, we are planning to set up, uh, they offered us uh, vineyards to set up and evaluate uh, treatments, mainly 
regarding uh, the micro, uh, uh, rhizob uh, rhizobacteria that we have collected, collected from our research program, and we are very thankful for uh, for that. And uh, I don't want to go through the department. It's a young department here. Uh, the one I represent, me and Mr. Nikoloudakis, we will talk to you, to you in, a, in a bit. It's a 14 years department, but we are very active, uh, fully equipped for uh, uh, microbiological and uh, uh, plant physiology research. We also have an agricultural farm that it has been recently established. Uh, uh, where we hold the uh, collection of indig indigenous and uh, international uh, grapevine uh, cultivars. We're planning to set up a few of our uh, actions, revine actions uh, there as well. Uh, so now I would like to ask Nikos Nikolaikis to talk for a couple of uh, two, three slides on his uh, research and how he will be implicated in the Revine project. Nikos. Okay, uh, hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, Nico. Okay, thank you. So, uh, it won't take a, a, a long time, just an introduction. I am uh, Nikos Nikolaudakis. I am a special teaching staff in Cyprus uh, University of Technology since uh, 2017. I have a biotechnological, plant biotechnological uh, background, uh, BS and a master uh, of science and a PhD from uh, the uh, plant breeding and biometry laboratory in Athens. So, uh, one of the things I wanted to see when I came in Cyprus uh, was the genetic resources of uh, grapevine. Now, regarding that research, uh, there is an eminent problem, a problem when it comes to uh, characterizing grapevine genetic resources in Cyprus, because even though Cyprus is near the domestication center of a grapevine and it uh, has uh, a millennium presence in uh, grapevine uh, viticulture and uh, uh, trade, uh, the genetic material of Cyprus hasn't been properly and sufficiently characterized. For instance, Pierre Gallet, which is an uh, esteemed mabelographer, he came into Cyprus and uh, proposed that there are uh, approximately 20 different cultivars, endemic cultivars. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in the national catalog of varieties, even today, only eight varieties exist, and two of them were uh, introduced this year. So, uh, we don't know a lot of uh, things about the uh, genetic material we have in Cyprus. So, we initiated a collection of centennial uh, grapevine samples in order to proceed to the genetic characterization and uh, to get for the first time an idea of what is out there in terms of variability. So, we got, we uh, collected roughly 200 accessions uh, from the broader Comandaria wine zone, one of the oldest uh, cultivating zones in uh, Europe, and uh, we did a characterization across 11 microsatellite loci, and we did find some impressive results. Uh, we found uh, a plethora of different genotypes that uh, we didn't know that they existed, and uh, that um, some of the lineages of those of these uh, unexplored varieties may exist. Uh, they, they, there might be some, we can call them cryptic varieties, you know, misidentified. So there is a lot of work to be done in terms of uh, genotyping. Uh, we also detected that uh, some of uh, these genotypes can be, in fact, uh, the result of uh, clonal or sexual propagation. There are two specific varieties that uh, can have a, a Sylvester's lineage, that is Maratheftko and Yanudi. Uh, Lucas, can you please change the slide? Okay, so uh, I think I think that you must go to the morphological. Okay, thank you. So, uh, in continuation to the genetic uh, fingerprinting, um, uh, we have initiated also the incorporation of international uh, descriptors in order to elucidate some morphological uh, traits that will help us with describing the genetic material. So, um, 
We use several uh, descriptors such as the, um, the petiole sinus, the, the, the presence of tooth in the petiole sinus, the, uh, the shape of the petiole sinus, the shape of the teeth, uh, and uh, some other morphological descriptors. And we primarily focus uh, on going now, uh, there's a student on that subject, on the Promara cultivar. And we have uh, already detected that uh, uh, there are extensive morphological discrepancies uh, across plants, so there must be uh, a lot of clones in the Cypriot uh, germplas. Uh, okay, Lucas, can you go to the flow cytometer? Okay, thank you. Now, another thing that uh, I'm currently working on uh, is the I'm trying to implement flow cytometry uh, in order to estimate the C value, which is the genomic context of uh, the Cypriot cultivars and uh, this can possibly resolve some of the um, uh, introgression, introgression cases of uh, Vitis vinifera subspecies uh, sylvestris into Vitis vinifera germplasm. Uh, for example, uh, there are two varieties, the uh, Maratheftico and the Yanudi, which are uh, red grape varieties that uh, are not self-compatible and that is a characteristic. They they they, have, they don't have fertile anthers, so they need to be cross pollinated. This is a characteristic of the Sylvestris lineage. So we try to uh, we're trying to implement flow cytometry in order to get uh, an idea, and because the Sylvestris and the Vitis vinifera have uh, different C values. That's what that's what I'm I'm trying to do now in order to achieve that. Uh, we need to get rid of, of uh, several interfering metabolites. If you have worked with the uh, grapevine uh, in molecular studies, you know that it is a very tough uh, tissue to work with because it has very uh, malicious uh, metabolites such as uh, tannic acid, uh, flavonoids, etc. So we're trying to develop a, a technique in order to get rid of these metabolites and get clear, clear readings. Now I have uh, inserted two figures uh, when we can see such effect. So in the upper uh, one figure, we can see that these uh, metabolites can cause a distortion of the propidium iodine signal, which is the FL2 axis. And uh, please uh, take uh, look that it is in a logarithmic scale. So these metabolites can uh, cause aggregates in uh, nuclei, in they bind to nucleic acids and you cannot get a clear histogram in order to get a clear picture of what the genomic content is. So we are trying to find and we're working on a, a protocol. We currently use a sorbitol free wash buffer. You can see that the result in the lower figure. What it shows that uh, there isn't a severe distortion in the FL2 axis and you can clearly uh, see the diploid, tetraploid or octaploid uh, nuclei. So uh, we are confident that we will uh, in this year develop a protocol that uh, will help us to uh, implement it in order to delineate the genomic context of uh, the Cypriot uh, cultivars. Uh, that's it uh, for my part. Back thank, to you. thank you, Nikos. Russia. Thank you very much. So, uh, after the biotechnology, biotechnology background of Nikos, I'll introduce a little bit myself. Uh, actually, I'm a plant pathologist, okay? And I have started working on uh, grapevine diseases the last uh, four years. Uh, my focus is on the integrated management of JTDs, grapevine trunk diseases, using uh, indigenous bio uh, biocontrol agents, physical methods like thermotherapy or conventional methods like uh, fungicides, so we're trying to put up, put up a holistic uh, uh, background in order to uh, fight against these uh, malicious diseases. We have, uh, I have uh, two projects uh, running uh, on, on this area. Uh, and uh, actually at this moment we have two running PhD students, so one working on indigenous bacterial uh, grapevine microbiomes for the alleviation of biotic and uh, abiotic stressors of uh, grapevine and a PhD that uh, just started working on uh, uh, BCAs and uh, conventional agents in the management of grape trunk diseases. The first student uh, is working mainly with rhizobacteria. 
while the second student is working mainly on uh, uh, fungal endophytes. So we're trying to incorporate uh, uh, two different approaches. And these students will be uh, also uh, uh, collaborate uh, with us in uh, Revine. So regarding uh, now the, our participation in Revine, uh, Chrysostomos, the first PhD student, has been working since 2018. He did a great collection of uh, rhizobacteria on four indigenous grapevine varieties. Uh, he collected around 500 uh, items, uh, which has, have been characterized uh, molecularly, 16S. He has done a lot of antagonistic activity assays regarding uh, uh, important uh, JTD pathogens like Nefusicocum parvum, Diplodia, Syriata, Utipalata, uh, two species of Dactylonectria, Ileonectria, Lidiodendria, and Fermonella chlamydospora. And uh, based on different assessments, uh, he has also done uh, enzymatic activities based on uh, antagonistic effect like lipase, esterase, protease, and so on. And he has also uh, tested PGPR activities. So, so far regarding the, the, the consort, the, 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 the microbial uh, uh, consortium we're participating, I think we are uh, uh, almost uh, ready to provide uh, beneficial uh, bacterial microorganisms for the, for the project. Uh, we are assigned to send uh, around 10, uh, if I'm not uh, wrong, uh, the only thing we are missing is the cytotoxicity effect of these uh, strains, but we are planning to uh, to go ahead and, and do so. So here are some uh, results, uh, preliminary results, where I'm showing you. Uh, we have ended up with 30 rhizobacteria, basically Bacillus, Panis Bacillus, Pseudomonas, and Streptomyces, that they exhibit uh, very good in vitro. Uh, results, I have to state that we haven't tested yet uh, on uh, on vines. Actually, we five, five minutes, five months, four months ago, we set up uh, a potted plant uh, experiment using a consortia of uh, Bacillus and uh, Pseudomonas uh, against uh, Fermonella chlamydospora, applying them uh, pre or co inoculated with the pathogen. So we feel very confident with this uh, part of the project and we, we will be in close collaboration with the uh, task uh, leaders to provide uh, uh, all the information and the fiscal material they, they want. So regarding now the task uh, 2.1 regarding the soil application, we will establish uh, experiments in uh, uh, the wineries uh, mainly, uh, we have to decide that at this moment we, we, are, we will be in discussion either the Vlasidis or the Kiperuda winery. Uh, we will test the, 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 the consortia on the established vineyards, but we are also planning to set up a potted vine experiment also in uh, our uh, agricultural farm uh, in order to have more uh, confined and more uh, 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 easy, easy, easy to to follow uh, plants. Regarding the task two, uh, I have to state that Cyprus doesn't have a breeding grapevine breeding program, uh, so our varieties have not been characterized uh, as in other countries. But uh, we have done some work, and I will show you. So uh, we are planning to. Uh, to, to, to uh, evaluate uh, local varieties, basically Xenisteri cultivar on the uh, wineries. And we are uh, thinking of setting up an experiment in the farm in two watering regimes on uh, some uh, local indigenous varieties, using also some control tests of international varieties uh, to make a fair comparison and have some uh, reliable results. So uh, something else is that uh, uh, regarding now our, our implication in the task uh, two point, uh, you know, it's, it's the, on the agronomic effect rates and the abiotic uh, and biotic resilience. Uh, I, I, I want you to know that 
you know, the Cyprus partners are not, although they participate in the project, they didn't uh, uh, gain funding from our local uh, agency due to COVID restrictions. They allocated our money for this, uh, you know, for this for their purposes. So at this point, uh, uh, we would like to help uh, with the collection of the data and some uh, basic analysis, but unfortunately, we will not be able to run a real uh, analysis in our uh, facilities. So I want to make that uh, uh, to, re to remind us to, uh, to our partners and uh, 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 we will be in collaboration to uh, find a solution into that uh, uh, issue since we want, don't want to cause any uh, drawbacks in the, in the program. So I wish uh, joyful and productive collaboration to all of you and thank you very much.